Jennifer Morton, and I'm the director of the nursing program, and i um, very happy to see such a nice turnout here in Portland and also in Biddeford from um, a number of health professions and a number of uh, liberal studies programs. So thank you all for, for coming. Um, we're really excited about um, this year's presentation um, about the Ghana program because something very special happened during our last, our last trip, which was in May going into June. Um, and that was that we brought um, UNE's own Dan Lambert, um, who's back there, wave Dan, um, who is a very, very talented filmmaker. And he chronicled the experience in a, in a short documentary for us, which came out absolutely amazing. And so, um, you're going to learn a lot about what this program is. Um, we've seen about 4,200 patients while we've been there. It's a clinical um, immersion program. Um, and we've also, um, we've also insured about uh, 350 um, patients um, with uh, health insurance. They have a universal health care system, if you can imagine. Such a wonderful thing. Um, so without um, further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Tricia Mason, and I'm going to also introduce Ashley Skulak first. Thank you, Jen, and thank you all for being here. We're really excited, as Jen said, to show you this documentary so that you can see firsthand the experience. It's the first time we've really been able to have a perspective of where we go and what we're doing. And, really hear about the experience as it goes along throughout the week. Um, I will be able to answer your questions about how to apply, all the nitty gritty details about how to get there, visas, questions you have about finances and scholarships, so I'll look forward to telling you more about that after we see the show. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Ashley Skolak. I'm one of the professors uh, for the nursing program, and Fortunately, I had the great experience um, this past summer on this trip uh, to accompany many of the nursing students uh, for their Ghana experience. And so I will be around if you guys have any questions just about what we do over there. Um, you know, feel free to just shoot me an email. You can, I have to leave a little bit early from this presentation because I have class, um, so they can help you get a hold of me. Before I step off stage and let them take back over, I just wanted to mention um, that over here, um, we have a table set up for a fundraiser. All the money um, that we have selling, we have headbands um, and hair scrunchies, I think, uh, for sale with Ghanaian fabric that was brought over and donated by uh, Dr. Morton. So we handmade those, the SNA, um, so feel free to purchase those on your way out. You can stop um, at the end of the presentation. But all of that money uh, that we're raising is actually going to go to raise money um, to get the anatomical skeletons for one of the trade schools that we visited over there. Um, and before we came back, that was one of the things that they had asked just to help them learn. Uh, so we really made it a priority to help fundraise and get some of that money. And I believe we are successful in raising money for two so far. Um, which is really great, so feel free to just stop over there. Okay, before we start the film, um, you all have blue evaluation forms on your table. If you could make sure you fill those out before you leave. If I can signal my film people. Boston right now, we'll be flying to Portugal, that will be our next stop for Ghana. We just got to Lisbon, Portugal, we have about a four hour layover.
On our bus ride in though, I was a little bit shocked at the um, living conditions that we had passed. First, I would say it was extremely hot, which I ex expected and very humid. The city was a lot bigger than I expected. I don't know why I expected it to be a lot smaller, but it was huge. I thought the only surprises really were just the amount of goats and chickens that are running around. <laughs> uh, first impressions, very different than anything I've experienced. I did have some culture shock. It was far from what I expected it to be and what I imagined in my head. And even though I have prepared a little bit, especially for the clinical aspect, I don't think you can really prepare. I'm excited, honestly. Um, I was kind of tired last night, got a good sleep. Woke up to some roosters crowing this morning. I'm very excited for what the week has to hold. I think that we're gonna get a lot done, meet some cool people. Um, I think we have a lot to learn. We definitely turned the clinic around. It was a bare, empty church. And then I felt like before I knew it, seats were filled with patients. I think that we're uh, getting along really well. We got some PT students. What do you think is contributing to your back pain? Pharmacy. Have you ever breastfed? Public health. And they treat you with respect? Social work, as well as nursing. And it's really just been great to kind of get everyone working together and the gears are meshing. I guess I just hope to learn how people here have become so resilient, how they get through some of the things that they're faced with, and maybe bring that back to my own life and some of the patients that I work with to teach resilience. Today we kind of saw it coming together in the clinical a bit, helping each other out. Is there anything else you'd like to today? I do believe that throughout the week it's really just going to become like a well-oiled machine. The Ghana Cross-Cultural Health Immersion Program was born of a chance meeting in an airport in 1993. I had the opportunity to travel to the U.S. for the first time in my life. It was quite an adventurous journey. God was with me. Lita McHenry, a registered nurse and longtime faculty at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and the Reverend Robert Ando, a well-known pastor in Ghana's western region, struck up a conversation that led to a long-lasting partnership. Ando and McHenry envisioned an equal exchange of knowledge and culture that could benefit both sides. They worked out a plan to bring UMass faculty and students to Ghana, in partnership with the Ghana Health Service and the local University of Cape Coast. When McHenry retired in 2008, she looked to former UMass doctoral student and mentee Jennifer Morton to take over administration of the program. Morton was by then on the nursing faculty at UNE, and McHenry was intrigued by UNE's interprofessional approach to health education and collaborative care. Perhaps more important was the philosophical alignment between the two women. McHenry trusted Morton to continue to lead the program according to its original vision. I knew when I became a faculty member that this was something I wanted to continue and I wanted to follow Lita McHenry's legacy in exposing students to something so important. We're hoping to see at least um, 50 people today. Uh, we have some of the nurses over here. Yesterday, unfortunately, our blood pressure machines weren't working, but they got them all up and running now. They're very excited. We have our pharmacy students over here. We got some uh, more medication last night, which is super exciting. 
We have our physical therapists over there getting ready to teach some exercises. And we have an optometrist up there. And social work will be doing some exit surveys. And we also have public health. We're doing some research, which will be really exciting to see the results. So we're excited for today and hope we can help a lot of people out. I'm Katie, I'm at the nurses station here in Ghana. I'm with Owen. And well, I'm at the lab station, so we're testing for malaria. We're drawing blood sugars. We're doing urine analysis, checking to see how people's kidneys are doing, making sure they don't have diabetes. People here, their blood sugars, blood pressures seem to run a little bit high, so we're trying to get an idea of that and keep everything under control. And if we see some numbers that we don't like, we'll send them over to pharmacy. We're running into a lot of infections and skin infections, upper respiratory infections, lots of anemia. We're seeing a lot of pain and so we're just trying to really like prep and that way we can stay ahead of the game a little bit. We've labeled a lot of things, pre-packaged lots of pain medications like ibuprofen and Tylenol. And did they ask you to follow up at a hospital or go get more medicine? What we do on day three, once folks are comfortable with the flow, is we start interchanging students in some of the different areas so they get an experience of what the different disciplines have to offer. For example, a nursing student may cross-train over in physiotherapy. A physiotherapist may cross-train over in intake. A nursing student may spend time doing pharmacy technician work in the pharmacy. All of these things are important as students learn to really understand what the roles and responsibilities are of other health professions disciplines. I've done some traveling but never with my nursing skills that I've learned at UNE and Maine is really becoming diverse so I think it's kind of important to have that cultural sensitivity going into my profession. We've been doing clinic for about four days now, and um, it's been a really great experience so far. At first I was having a little bit of um, I guess spiritual issues because I kind of came here and I wasn't, I didn't really know what to expect, and from seeing all the patients and what was going on, especially the little kids that had some malnutrition. I felt like, why do I get to live the life I live? Can I hear you? I think I already did your assessment. Ready? And it was really helpful to have my teachers and my colleagues here to be able to debrief that because it was really a bad feeling that I was feeling. And then after talking about it, I felt so much better. I think, though, what you really have to do is come here and just look at it through the context of community and the richness of their culture and how much they know one another and celebrate and are just more or less a very happy population. And I think those are values that you can't put a price on. Now, even at the halfway point, I already have a completely different outlook on everything. I've definitely grown a lot in the last four days and it's crazy to think that it's only been four days because I feel like so much has happened and it's just, really made me grateful for where I come from and also grateful for the experience to, ex to be in a different culture and to be living amongst these people who are so beautiful and welcoming. Ghana, situated on the Gulf of Guinea in West Africa, was the first sub-Saharan African nation to achieve independence from colonial rule. Ghana's 28 million people comprise several native groups and a rich and diverse cultural life. Sekundi Takoradi, a port city and commercial center in Ghana's western region, is the country's third largest metropolitan area. While clinical work is the priority, 
The Ghana Immersion Program recognizes that people's health is tied to their culture and community. Whenever there's free time, students and faculty embark on day trips and sightseeing excursions where they learn more about Ghanaian history and culture. The Almina Castle, I think, fostered a sense of self-reflection. Also being there and all the history that it holds is more or less haunting. Something I really enjoyed was seeing the art, just beautiful paintings. What does your school day look like? We learn a lot and then there is, after the learning, they break us a little to go and refresh our mind. Well, I'm so happy to be here and meet you all. Thank you for having us. Well, thank you. It was beautiful. We got to uh, run in the ocean and take pictures. Amazing food. Reverend Ando has getting in dresses and shirts made for all the female and male students and faculty, and so we attend the service. It's a very heartwarming experience for our students, faculty, as well as the community. After a week in Reverend Ando's home base of Secundi, the team headed out to the rural towns of Consolorado and Diabani to help expand healthcare access to these more remote communities. Hi, I'm Ifwa. I'm a community health worker, physician assistant, and we are at Cancerado, and this is day five. So we are here to attend to the, um, those from the villages. The rural sites are an important aspect of the partnership. They allow students to assess the differences between patient populations. For example, patients in the rural communities tend to be sicker, especially in Cancerado and the urban patients in Secundi Takaradi tend to have higher rates of being insured. The immersion program is built around the equal exchange of culture and knowledge. As Director Jennifer Morton says, our purpose is not to impose Western health care. Students come to Ghana to learn, and to that end, the relationships they form with the Ghanaian partners are invaluable. Denise. Working with members of Reverend Ando's congregation, as well as medical professionals from the Ghanaian National Health Service and the local Cape Coast University, students are guided across cultural and language barriers and introduced to new perspectives on health, medical care, material wealth, as well as many practical lessons on providing care with limited resources. 
I think it's a win-win situation for both communities, I would say. For the students coming down, I think I've seen lots of them the first time in Africa, first time in Ghana. They're meeting different cultural setups and what have you. But for the community here in Ghana, knowing our health system and its challenges, I think it's, 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 it's been positive and it's impacted. Okay. For the students that come here, I believe uh, it's uh, an eye-opener to some of the tropical conditions, probably we'll never see in the, the UK or US. And uh, it's an experience that others who haven't been here may not have. But the edge is all on the mind. So it's never going to heal. It looks like it's healing, but what he's saying is the bacteria, like know, until that bacteria gets treated with certain antibiotics, it continues to undermine the surrounding that tissue and it won't actually get better. Uh, so they will get to learn a lot from the patients and also it will give them a different idea about what health is. The stories, the touching stories about the patient, why they have that condition and what they are doing about it and the fact that because of their financial situation which has landed some of them in such condition um, when they leave here it gives them a, a very different experience they begin to become very connected with their patients this is for your cough uh. <laughs> along the way many lifelong friendships are made we're staying in pretty close quarters, me and some of the guys, so we've been hanging out quite a bit and uh, they've showed me around Secundi a bit and really got to walk around, try some local flavor, watch a couple football matches. It's been great, we've really been getting along well and just meshing well. They've been very great, especially Owen. It's as if we've known each other for a very long time and it's just two weeks. Arado and Diaveni were selected as locations for the rural clinics, in part because of the Reverend Ando's long-standing relationships with the paramount chiefs of the two communities. You are being given as hope. And also we are strong now. Your medicine is very good. So you are helping us very well. Highlight of the program is the annual performance of the Ghanaian dance and drum troupe, Abrempong. Working in the style of what is called Gahu music, with six distinct percussion instruments, the troupe performs dances associated with local tribes and festivals. Well, it uh, confirmed my suspicion that I'm a terrible dancer. Their performance was awesome. It was really something that I've never seen before, and so. Being able to experience that and see them in the traditional garb, and it's good music. The celebration is the joyful and emotional climax to a rich and eventful fortnight.
to the heart, yes, mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. I feel like the love and joy and laughter that we all share here together is something that I don't experience often. It is such an amazing community of people. Thank you for welcoming us into your community and treating us like family. It's been the best two weeks ever. Everybody here want to say a very big thank you to all of you. Yeah. We want to see you back again. Yeah. So that's all. God bless you. Yeah. What a great group, really. It feels like we're all family right now. And uh, it's a great feeling. And just thank you all for opening up your arms and taking us in. The last couple weeks have been amazing. I feel like I've grown professionally, emotionally, mentally. It's been a really great experience. I'm kind of sad to leave, but I'm also looking forward to going home with a new outlook. I think the things I'll remember most here are the connections I've made between the community health workers, the students and the professionals from Cape Coast. We've just learned so much from them, and honestly, I think we built really good friendships. I have a new outlook on everything and I'm excited to make some new changes in my life that I've picked up from this experience, so happy and sad at the same time. I've also really gained such a respect for the healthcare professions out here and from what they've been able to teach us has been immeasurable. It's a completely different game out here with what they have to work with and I have nothing but gained respect for how they go about their day. And it really feels good to have you and me around, you know, to the students, teaching them. I'm also learning from them, the American culture, Ghanaian culture. We talk, it's so nice. We've fallen in love with them and we wish they would come back and, and learn more. We want to say we are indebted to the school for allowing us to work hand in hand with these wonderful people that come our way under the leadership of Dr. Jennifer. Our last day in Ghana, this has been an amazing, humbling, emotional experience for all of us. I think we would all say that we're coming out of this changed. God bless you, I hope to see you all very soon.
Wasn't that amazing? Um, so I would like, we have a few students who um, are here that participated in the program as well as, um, as uh, the faculty and I would love for, for you to come forward because generally people want to hear from the students as to what the experience was like from their vantage point. Um, many of the students graduated and many of them are out on rotation so it may be that we just have Cassidy here today, but we also have a few faculty. Um, and, you know, I'd like to open it up to the audience. Um, first of all, um, any questions that you have about the program that weren't answered in the film? Um, I think uh, what you could see, um, and from the credits after, is there are as many healthcare workers and community health workers as there are of us. So there's a real dedication uh, to the community, um, to the program. But um, I'd like to open it up for any questions people might have ab about the program or um, about participating in the program. And I'm going to introduce Cassidy Cleves. Does anyone have any questions about the program at all? Oh yeah, we brought a lot of suitcases full of um, supplies. We did make a couple runs while we were there, I think, to pick up more medication. Um, I think we tried to find some more, um, some of the w blood pressure. So Partners for World Health is, um, we, we, we go there before. We get a lot of um, what I've known over the years that we're gonna need. Um, and every student um, has uh, an allotment of two checked bags and they save one of those checked bags just for supplies. And as Cassidy said, we purchase a lot of our medicine over there to support the economy and uh, any equipment that's broken we'll, we'll purchase over there as well. Oh look, here comes Shelby. Oh. <laughs> So I'm a social work student. Um, I was the only social work student this year. We have Shelby, who is a pharmacy student. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend this trip. Um, just working with an interprofessional team was amazing and pushing yourself to, I don't know, feel uncomfortable and do your work in a completely different culture. Um, it'll definitely progress you as a professional. Does anyone else have any other questions about the trip? No. Well, it was a great film. Dan did such a great job. We we're so grateful for him to be there and capture this. Um, people often ask when we came home, you know, what was it like? And you say amazing, but I think this does a little bit of a better job capturing how amazing that trip was. So. Talk a little bit about the health conditions that you learned a lot about while you were over there. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot, I was thinking even on my way here what I would say, and I would say the first two days that I got there I was extremely emotional. I felt, I felt a little bit bad about how much I felt that I had here and people didn't have in Ghana. And slowly, Colleen talked about it in the video, but you slowly learn to change your perspective of stop looking at, you know, what do people here not have that I have at home? And you start looking at how much they have that may, maybe we don't have at home. So the resilience there that I talked about in the film was amazing. Um, just the things that kept people going every single day when maybe they did were in poor health, um, but emotionally they were striving. They were doing amazing. Um, and I learned how to, you know, kind of talk about th that with these people. You know, what is keeping you going every day? What is you know, the resilience that's pushing you forward every single day. And um, I think that's how these people stayed healthy when they might have still been living in some very unhealthy conditions. So that was amazing to see. What do you think, Shelby? Did you see anything there that surprised you about the health conditions? No, just what Cassidy said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with. Yeah, I think we were all, it's, it's hard to put to words some of, the, some of the conditions that we saw and some of the things that we experienced. So I was very grateful for all of us to be able to debrief together every single night and um, 
you know, there was, it was emotional. Very much so. Um, I know um, being, oh, question. I have, I have another question. How did you address any nutritional insufficiencies you may have come across? Mm -hmm. I would say, <clears throat> so we also had to be realistic, right? So um, especially with medication and um, routines that we were asking them to perform and they got home, especially with physical therapy, you had to be realistic with what um, people in Ghana were able to do. So nutritionally, I think we, we did talk to some individuals about, you know, what are you eating every day? What, what is the nutrition that you're getting? And also um, talking a little bit more about our recommendations, but not, it's more of a conversation than telling them what you should or shouldn't be doing. You know, the research that our public health students were doing was about um, breast cancer, or breast, sorry, breastfeeding. And um, talking, you know, we have a lot of ideas here in the United States about how long someone should breastfeed their baby for and why that's so important. And so coming into the conversation not in a judgmental way and listening, you know, why do you do this? And a lot of the women had, you know, my baby um, performs better, is healthier when I give them water with the breast milk. Um, so just having a, a conversation. You know, we were learning just as much as we were hoping others could learn from us. So I would just say open line of communication there. Hi, I, um, uh, Dan, you made me cry. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. And students, um, um, your ability to be articulate in the midst of all of this was so helpful in bringing home what, what truly this means. And what struck me um, <clears throat> is the interprofessional aspect, too. And I wonder how, um, if, if that aspect changed for you going into the program and then coming back out, because I would imagine <clears throat> how you worked together was, was different. Mm -hmm. And um, any thoughts you would have on that um, going forward? Do you want to answer any? Um, sure. So I think it definitely uh, changes your mindset after the whole experience. I personally took advantage of all the occupations that were there. I followed around the eye doctor. I did um, some testing with the nurses. I was massaging some legs with the PT and I followed them to one of their home visits. And it's amazing to see how much work each occupation um, puts in when caring for their patient. And you also get to really realize how everything is connected and how important it is to um, follow through in every area of a person's health care to give the best um, care possible. So, yeah. Yeah, um, so we saw the ulcerated wound and that looked pretty bad. I'm wondering what other disease states did you see and, and you know, what was the degree of you know, how bad the conditions were that patients had? Um, we definitely saw hypertension, um, right? Blood pressures um, that you definitely do not see <laughs> over here in the States. Um, what else? It's yeah. I would say the, like, the blood pressure was crazy high. Cra something like look at numbers and be like, wow. Um, so that, I mean, I'm a social worker, so I, I was learning a lot also about what I was seeing. So maybe that would be better to hear from a nursing. So we can absolutely um, jump in. So chronic disease, or um, as uh, Shelby was talking about, the hypertension is very, very high prevalence of hypertension. Um, also, diabetes is um, another chronic disease that there's a high prevalence of. There are lots of cancers. So um, really, chronic disease in low-income countries is, is rising to the level of what it is in um, higher income countries. So that, that's, a, that's turning into quite a fact. Now, infectious disease is of a, a lot higher prevalence over there than it is here. And of course, tropical diseases like malaria, we see a lot of malaria. Um, occasionally, we'll see a case of typhoid. Um, lots of skin infections. You talked about the wounds. A lot of the wounds um, these people have had for many, many years. Um, they're colonized and they've just really turned into chronic ulcers that 
that may not ever heal. And so we, um, we work really hard to get the process of healing started when we're there. We do a lot of teaching um, in addition to antibiotics, and we, um, we ask them to come back uh, the following year. But we also ask them to follow up. People that have chronic conditions, um, things like wounds, um, we will insure them. Um, rather than buying a lot of medicines and things for them to take home, we get them started and we get them started on health insurance because that has more longitudinal impact and, um, and we ask them to come back the next year. This, we've been doing this with the insurance for about six years now and we're tracking data and it's made a huge difference in ongoing health outcomes. So. So thank you, I thought that was great. I just had a question about the medication that you would give out and how, when, is that transitioning, like you were saying, to the longitudinal impact of then continuing on that medication once they get health insurance? Is yes. that how that works? So how, how many days did we give out this time? Uh, typically, I think it was seven to 10 days. Okay. And so, and so we, we had, um, we had the, um, the health insurance folks there enrolling every day. So we would we send patients over to the health, health insurance people and they're insured on the spot. And uh, very thorough teaching from our pharmacy folks of when they w should go back to um, the, the chemist or the pharmacy to get their refill. And so in the health insurance, for most medicines, um, except for things like chemotherapy, the health insurance will cover it. So very, it was a very um, wonderful, warm handoff in healthcare terms. We'd love to have questions from Bitterford too. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, so besides poverty, was there any other barriers to health care or receiving health care in Ghana? I mean, communication was definitely one of the big ones. Um, not speaking the same language, right? So when we were providing health care, at least, um, we had translators, but you also want to make sure that, you know, what they're saying and what you're saying is being um, communicated correctly. Um, but you find other ways to communicate. I think you saw Rachel there when she was talking about a cough. She, ex like, exemplified that. And, um, yeah, you just, when you see so many people, people start interpreting um, maybe things a little bit quicker, and you just want to make sure that what you're saying is being interpreted correctly. So I would say communication was, was hard there. But in terms of their health care, you know, year-round when we're not there, I think... Yeah, poverty would, would be one of the big ones. Also, I think education, like in terms of how to care for yourself, sometimes that can be um, a barrier there, which also is wrapped in with poverty, so. Were many of these patients employed? And if so, what was the most common job that these patients worked at? Yeah. Um, so I think it was kind of hard to tell if they were employed or not. I think just because when you first get there and even driving through the streets, there's so many people carrying and balancing these huge like baskets of Things. I think in the video we saw the lady with the chickens on her head. So yes, that is their job, and they, I believe they do that from morning to night. Um, and then some of the other local jobs there, I'm not sure. What I mean, there's, I think everyone has a job there in you know, some way, whether it be people did were able to go to college and now they're working um, that type of professional job, or yeah, just going, waking up every morning and selling something at the market. You go through the market. Yeah, and a lot of, of selling. People, so, I'd say everyone has their own job of some sort, supporting the family. Everyone has a job there. I'm curious about whether you talked at all with your colleagues there, or saw patients with mental health issues, and what the cultural differences are around perceptions of 
mental health and mental illness? I'll speak to this, I suppose, as a social work student. Um, I honestly had no idea going into it about what that would look like. So um, I was, Kelly and I did talk a bit about it before we left, that you know, mental health issues are not as um, talked about there as they are here. So going in, my role was more about interviewing what your experience was like um, working with us as providers, you know, that was more my role. I wasn't there to talk, like provide therapy or talk about mental health issues. But we did see, you know, children, especially who had some cognitive differences. Um, and from what I saw, it looked like these children were well respected in the community. Um, that being said, I think there is still a lot of stigma regarding mental illness there, and it's not as communicated about. But um, we are hoping just as years as we keep going, that maybe we can um, start that relationship a little bit more. But we're not gonna, again, we're there to learn. We're not going there to um, push any of, of our ways and what we believe on any of these people, so. Um, were there any obvious differences in the approach to medicine between the providers native to Ghana and what you learn here in America on this campus? Hmm. That might be more of a medical question. Yeah. I mean, I would say, oh, it was hard. Rachel, do you have anything? Did you hear the question? Sorry. Um, well, first of all, one thing that's obviously something that I had to orient to over there is that the medications are a bit different. Um, and so that's always a learning curve and it's really expanded my breadth of knowledge in that area. Um, so they use different antibiotics, they use different blood pressure medications, and so that's something to get used to. But there's also, um, so for instance, with blood pressure management, um, they do not see that things like diuretics work as well for that population, so that's not something that they're prescribing first line. Um, so they, and there's many other instances of things like that where they have first line agents that work better for that population. Um, and also I would say that I saw a lot more of a tendency to just prescribe um, to, to treat everything and so that did become a little bit of a challenge when it came to having to like keep a budget of pharmacy um, and trying to just treat the acute illnesses or just a short amount of supply for the chronic things. Um, so I think maybe just a different definition of polypharmacy, um, maybe more of a tendency to over prescribe potentially. But also when I think about that, I think that these patients are maybe only connected to us once a year. And whereas we could, we're connected to our providers every maybe three to six months or every year. Um, so that makes treatment different in itself, right? So these patients are coming and they're listing off like a whole host of things that they would like to be treated at that moment. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure there's many times where not all the things we're be able were able to be addressed, but um, they really do. I think also there's this sort of notion um, by many in that culture that if they receive something, that it's going to be an automatic cure. And so I think we have to be careful with that when we prescribe and in the way that we counsel. Um, just it's almost like there's this tendency to believe that if they get a medication, it will be an ultimate resolve. Yeah. I would just add to that too, um, that they um, don't have the luxury, especially in the rural areas, of diagnostic tests and x-rays and things like that. So prescribing um, happens uh, more freely, I should say, because of the diagnostic ability isn't, isn't quite there, as it, as it is in our context. Mm. We'll get you next. Um, I'm interested to know if, other than childbirth, um, are there any specialties around women's health 
specifically? And did you do any of that work while you were there? So that's a great question, Polly. <laughs> um, midwifery is um, as enrolled as a, as a health profession as nursing. And so uh, you know, nursing it represents here about 41% of the healthcare workforce. Midwifery um, is, is a large proportion um, as well, as well as nursing. So the three dominant health professions over there are medicine, physicians, um, midwifery, and uh, nursing. And so, yes, midwives are trained um, in birth, um, antenatal care, postpartum care, and also um, in women's health. So some, you know, the health promotion part probably isn't happening to the degree that it does here, but the midwives are, are well trained. And I know there are some low resource countries where midwives are being trained to an even more advanced practice of doing C-sections. Um, not, it's not been widely adopted, but it's, it's decreased infant mortality incredibly. And I know it's happening in Kenya, but yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you asked people to come back to the clinic the following year, and I was just wondering, and this might be more for you, but even for some of you that were there, did you see people that came back from the past, and how many years maybe did they come back, and, and did they share that with their smaller communities within the larger community? Absolutely. Um, the community comes back every year. They, they know us very well. Um, they embrace us. And that's one of the reasons why this program is so successful, because of the established trust. Um, you know, there have been some interesting cases where, you know, uh, we may be running out of supplies toward the end of the clinic, so we write a referral on a little alcohol pad and give it to somebody, and they bring that pad back the next year, because we said we would bring a cane the next year, and they bring it back. It's in it's pristine shape it, as it was when we gave that gave it to them. And so, absolutely, we see them every year. Yeah. Dr. Cohen Conrad, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I think I, know. I, I was there in 2011, yeah. and I think for me, watching this, the growth of the program and the, the work that's being done that continues to mm -hmm. be done is just phenomenal. I mean, I really just yeah. want to certainly encourage you yeah. to go and uh, or to have that experience. I know it changed my life yeah. and the way I see things. I think listening to the students, um, it's very powerful, and of course... I love the interprofessional work. It's right. real time right. in really working together and seeing the value of what it means to know what other people do. So, yeah, well, it was incredible. Um, well, and I think the, the thing that really sets this program apart, and it was um, alluded to in the film, what really sets this program apart is the, um, is the um, approach to um, being a global health provider. Uh, in that you, um, you work with the community and not at the community. And that's, that's where the trust comes. And, and that's what sets this program apart. Um, there are a lot of um, programs out there called mission work that are, um, that are really an invasion of their values with ours. And our values aren't necessarily better or, or sustainable. Um, and so the, la the last thing I would like to say is um, uh, to Dan Lambert, uh, this wonderful gentleman that, that, that filmed everything and took many, many, many pictures. Um, this area, Secondi, is uh, about two miles from the equator. So needless to say, it's, it's a little warm and toasty there. This guy was hauling around equipment, hundreds of pounds of equipment, up 
big hills and and I mean he was just had such a really positive outlook he was on call 24 7 and he he just really took this on and I I couldn't have have asked for anything more than what he provided it well exceeded um, all of our expectations so again I want to thank Dan and the whole communications department for the wonderful work they did so oh another question hi I was just curious are, do you guys plan on having any like DO student involvement or physician assistant or dental student involvement in this on these rotations and so if we, not, why not? And if so, we've had um, uh, physician assistant. Uh, we've had the physician physician assistant program involved, um, and my understanding is they're wanting to get back involved. I talked with one of the faculty members recently. We've also had some College of Medicine students participate. What we need when students want to participate is a dedicated faculty member to learn the program and be able to provide the oversight that's needed. Um, and so um, we're always happy to have conversations, but we can't do anything without a dedicated faculty member. Um, dental students, um, I don't believe I've, um, the dental medicine hasn't been here that long, so I don't believe I've had a conversation yet, but we're always open, yeah. I will say one other thing um, about including in the film the need to include the broader context and looking at the culture and the mm -hmm. community and not just the illness or right. problems that you see. And I remember you preparing me very well saying, now Shelley, don't freak out when you see little kids running off from their parents. And I think that, that part of the beauty of, of this is really truly becoming culturally immersed. And again, um, and, and learning from you and from all of you about what that actually means in real time. Mm -hmm. So um, for those of you who have real interest in, in culturally informed and responsive programming and healthcare, you couldn't have a better experience. Thank you. Yes. Jen, if you're not a student, how do you sign up to go with you? I'm sorry? How do you go get to sign up and go oh, with you if you're I'm not a student? I'm going to let Trisha respond to that. Are you, are you a faculty member? Oh, are you a faculty member? I wish. Is that? It's Patty. It's Patty. Oh, Patty. <laughs> um, well, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. I, the lights are... I can't see well back there, but yes, we'll have a conversation. I'm just going to ask one more time if any of our Bid Bideford students, do any of you have any questions for anyone in the room? I guess not. Okay, well. Thank you so much, everyone. That's been wonderful having you here. And um, oh, wait! I think we have somebody. Oh, okay. Do we have the Bideford hand? Okay. Let's see where the microphone goes. On the scene with Michelle Cody. <laughs> Sorry, there are no questions here. <laughs> A lot of engagement, but no questions. Okay. All right. Thanks, All right. Michelle. Well, Bitterford campus, thank you so much. Portland campus, thank you so much. I know a lot of students had to go to class. Um, but um, again, any questions or, um, or any thoughts about the program, um, feel free to reach out to Tricia Mason or myself. Um, the website is active and has um, uh, good information on it.